Hey guys, Darren Miles here with Darren Miles Photography, based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. Apologies for the dearth of videos lately. I've been revamping and rebranding re my real estate photography course, and that's been taking up a lot of time. That said, many of you know I do a lot of real estate photography and videography, a lot. And this is a wide angle lens designed specifically for those purposes. Now, before we get into this review, shameless plug, apologies on the front end, head on over to growyourphotobiz.com. It's a course focused on the real estate photography business. If you happen to be a struggling portrait or wedding photographer, one of the single most underrated ways to grow both of those businesses is to consider becoming a real estate photographer. Why? Well, frankly, you'll be amazed at the sheer number of free referrals that real estate agents will bring your way if you're any good at, at all at relationship building. Check it out. Because if you're, a struggling, if you're struggling to make ends meet as a professional photographer, you'll probably get something out of it. Now, with that out of the way, this is the Venus Optics 12mm f2.8 0D or zero distortion lens, an uber wide angle lens designed to bring minimal amounts of distortion to your, to your photographs, despite its massive 121 degree field of view. This is one of those lenses that I've been meaning to review for a long time because lots of YouTubers and content creators rave about this thing. They rave about its wide field of view and they rave about its optics. But I have to say that wasn't my experience at all. Now, if you're curious to find out exactly what my experience was, stick around, find out. So first up is the build, and I'll just say it right now, it's robust and hearty like a big bowl of Texas chili. It's made out of metal and comes in at 1.34 pounds or 609 grams. The Lawa, though heavy, doesn't tip the scale with quite the same bulk as many of the other lenses in this same space. For example, the Sigma 14.18, granted it's f1.8, but it's 2.6 pounds. The Canon EF 14 2.8 is 1.42 pounds. If you look at the zooms in the same space, the Nikon 14 to 24 is 2.2 pounds, the Canon EF 16 to 35 is 1.7 pounds, Tamron 15 to 30, 2.4 pounds, Sony 16 to 35, 1.5 pounds, and finally the Canon RF 15 to 35 is 1.85 pounds. The Lawa is lighter than them all, which is somewhat surprising because it is 12 millimeters and f2.8, but simultaneously it's not that surprising because the lens doesn't have an AF motor. What that means is, if you're using it for video and you're moving around the house on a gimbal, it's not as taxing weight-wise on a long day as many of the competitors are, while simultaneously giving you an even wider field of view. It's kind of cool. The focus ring is effortless. It's fluid and it moves with the perfect amount of resistance. It's just satiny smooth. It's awesome and has a resounding sense of quality. Because this is a completely manual lens, the 12 also has an aperture ring which clicks audibly from stop to stop. On a full frame camera like the a7 III that I'm using it on here, I'm usually shooting my real estate images at f8 and my real estate videos anywhere from wide open to f4, depending on the lighting conditions. Speaking of the aperture, it ranges from f2.8 all the way to f22, and there are seven rounded aperture blades. But given its extreme wide field of view, we're usually not buying a lens like this for its fabulous bokeh rendering. In fact, it's typically the opposite. We're actually trying to get everything in the scene in tack sharp focus, which can in fact actually be done at f2.8, but we'll cover that more in the optics section. The optical formula is made up of 16 elements arranged in 10 groups, and included in that formula are three extra low dispersion elements, which according to Lawa, reduce chromatic aberrations and color fringing for increased clarity and color neutrality. There's also two spherical elements that limit spherical aberrations for improved sharpness. Not so sure about that, but we'll cover that in a second. Like other Venus optics, Lawa lenses, that, like, like other Venus optics Lawa lenses, the 12 has this frog eye coating. Who comes up with these names? This actually helps repel dust and moisture when working in, in inclement environments. The front element is bulbous like many others in this space and won't allow for standard screw-on filters. However, there are adapters out there that will let you place a filter in front of the front element. The lens cap is also a very unique design. It slides over the front element and slides into place with a nice, I guess you could call it like an airtight feeling, almost like there's suction going on there. And when you take it off, too, it adds to the overall feeling of high quality. It just feels like quality. 
But all in, the Lawa impresses with, with its nice combination of solid build without being overbearing, weather sealing and smooth focus and aperture rings, meaning for build, the 12 gets a very solid 9.5 out of 10. Next up is a word about focus. As previously mentioned, the Lawa is a dead lens. That is, there's no electronic connectivity between the lens and the camera, which also means there's no focus motor on the inside. That said, manual focus with the Lawa is actually a breeze, combined with the wide depth of field of such a wide angle lens and the focus peaking of the Sony bodies that I've been using it on, even wide open, achieving accurate focus is actually a piece of cake with the Lawa. Now, most of the folks who buy this lens are likely gonna be photographing static subjects that need everything in the scene in focus. Think real estate, architecture, and landscape photography. Now that said, because it is a manual focus only lens, autofocus auto speed and accuracy simply do not apply. So for AF speed and accuracy and the Lawa, it's just not applicable. Next up is what counts, and that is, how are the optics? Well, I'm sure I'm gonna hear about this. Overall, I have to say that the optics are just okay to frankly below average. Center performance is in fact acceptable. However, edge performance, even stop down, leaves a lot to be desired. It's also true that in my experience, the focus peaking of the A7 line of cameras is honestly not all that great. But at F8, so long as the focal point is close to the center of the room, usually we're pretty good. In real estate, again, because I'm shooting most of the time at F8 and on most of the lenses that I use, when I stop down that much, edge performance usually improves dramatically, but that's not so with the Lawa. Not super surprising, again, given the ultra, ultra wide angle nature of this lens, but I do wish stop down to F8, edge performance were better than this. This matters to me as a real estate photographer because a lot of my clients will in fact take these images and will print them on sometimes large brochures. And it's not that the clients or the client's clients are inspecting the edges of the images, but it does make a difference to me. And if you happen to have a picky agent, I work with a lot of them, they may in fact notice. Moreover, vignetting wide open is atrocious, chromatic aberrations are reasonably well controlled, and flare performance is just okay, but not unusual for a wide angle lens. On the plus side, the 12 does live up to the billing of having minimal distortion for a lens in this category. Don't get me wrong, there's distortion, but for such a lens, it's extraordinarily well controlled. That said, as with all my reviews, don't take my word for it, see for yourself. The next one or two minutes will be a series of still images and video clips showcasing the optics of the Lawa 12mm f2.8 0D lens. Groundbreaking with its controlled distortion, but falls just a bit short in the overall optics department, in my opinion. Filling out my cup, coffee talk on the screen porch So in love, now you're the one I'm losing sleep for And I hope the wrong one slip right through your magic fingers And I hope we find some way to fall in love like we were Yeah, you're the only reason I was California dreaming in the first place Seeing you in sundress seasons got me all up in my feelings for the old days Old days Last up is value, and it's an interesting proposition because at $949, on the one hand, you have an incredibly wide-angle lens with very, very well-controlled distortion characteristics, but you also have some inherent issues with image quality when you get this wide. 
I would argue that in motion pictures, it's not quite as important to have tack, tack sharp optics as it is in stills, especially if those stills are going to be sent to print. To wit, I don't notice the image quality nearly as much in my real estate videos as I do with my still images. Now, as impressed as I am with the build and the extreme wide angle nature of the lens, I'm not quite sure that if you're a paid professional real estate or architectural photographer that I could recommend this lens over the 14 millimeter competitors that are out there, both the zooms and the primes. In fact, I find myself more impressed with the optics of the Samyang 14 millimeter f2.8 on my Sony than I am with the Lawa, and that lens has AF and it's considerably less money. However, if you're a real estate videographer, then I think there's a place for this lens. As mentioned, the optics aren't quite as important in video as they are in stills. Go ahead and cue the guy who's out there that, is, that will hammer me for that point, but that's just my opinion. However, in that role, especially this wide, I feel like the Lawa excels in video. It's also entirely possible that I got a soft copy of the lens because I've seen other reviews that have optics way better than what I'm experiencing. So there could be some significant copy to copy variants. Please comment down below about your experiences with the lens. The bottom line is, in my reviews, I have to base the value on the lens that's in my hand, meaning that for value, the 12 only gets a six out of 10. To wrap with this review, we gave the Venus Optics Lawa 12mm f2.8 0D lens a 29.5 out of 40 and our below average rating. The final word, if you're a real estate videographer who dabbles in real estate photography, then there may be a place in your camera bag for the Lawa 12mm f2.8. However, if you are a real estate photographer first, there are, in my opinion, many other lenses available in the marketplace today that are simply better options. None of them are as wide, but nearly all of them are autofocus lenses with better optics. In reality, 14 millimeters, in my experience, is more than wide enough for most applications, both in stills and video, especially in real estate. In the end, what we have here is a lens that's really just a one-trick pony. It's extraordinarily wide and has extraordinarily well-controlled distortion, but unfortunately, it doesn't have a whole lot else. I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like videos like this, go ahead and give me a like, or better yet, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, happy shooting.